Let's go straight to the phone lines because my guest this afternoon right now in Israel, live from Israel, is Zev Peret. Zev, you with me, my man? Shalom, Carl. How are you? <laughs> Shalom, Zev. I'm doing great. It's so good to hear your voice. Always enjoy having you on the show when we can. I know, again, uh, I, I, I can't remember. It's 11 or 12. Uh, I think it's midnight there right now, huh? It's a little after midnight, yes. Yeah, well, thank you so much for staying up late uh, to share with our uh, Freedom Friday listeners all over the world what's going on in Israel, man. I, listen, uh, you and I communicate by email almost daily, and uh, at least once a week we communicate by telephone. But it's getting hard for me to keep up with the exploits that you are doing for the gospel kingdom uh, there in Israel. I mean, you, you've led an Orthodox Jew to the Lord at the Wailing Wall. You've led an Orthodox Jew to the Lord at in the old city. Uh, you, you've led others to the Lord um, around Israel. You've been in a mosque in Haifa. You've been in a synagogue in Jerusalem uh, sharing the gospel. Uh, and and, and, and you, one of the things, the thing that I'm honored is that you're able to use the book I wrote, the, the, the Rabbi Who Found Messiah, and the movie they made out of it to assist you in doing this. So, so tell us, what, just tell us what's the latest, what's on your mind. And I, I'm going to have a lot of questions, but, but just uh, tell us what's going on, Zev. Well, you know what, Carl? It's uh, amazing. Glory to God. Glory to Yeshua. It's, uh, I call it a Kadura revival. You know, it, it's, uh, yeah. The book and the DVD is just opening the door for people to hear the gospel. Uh, you know, we just had Passover uh, right now this week, and Monday we were out sharing uh, in, in Passover in Israel, in, in Perathigva. It's a city located near Tel Aviv. Yeah. And walked up to many people over there. And uh, there was one, one man over there that said that was very interested, but he said, look, I can't read English well. I see the note of Rabbi Kaduri's in Hebrew. And I, so I started to read the book to him, but he, wanted, he had a lot of questions. So I right. said, you know, I'll give you a DVD. So I gave him a DVD, and he went home. Uh, just this morning, early this morning, at, at 6.30, at 6.30 a.m., I get a phone call at 6.30 in the morning. It's him. I couldn't believe it. He calls me, and he, his name is Shimon. And he says, Zev, I need to meet you. I said, okay, we'll meet next week. He says, no, I need to meet you immediately. So when he said that, I immediately felt that the Holy Spirit was right. telling me to go meet him. Right. And, uh, yeah, well, he's, we met in Pedofico, but he's from Herzliya. So I went down to Herzliya. We met over there. And he said he, said he watched the DVD, and, uh, you know, he saw that, uh, you know, everything about Rabbi Kaduri. You mentioned you talk about Psalms 22 in the DVD. Yeah. Something amazing happened. He went, actually, because of the DVD, he read Psalms 22. The Holy Spirit kept him up for two nights, <laughs> and that's why he called me over. We ended up studying the Gospel for hours, went through the note of Rabbi Kaduri, and he was fascinated to hear about uh, the Rabbi Kaduri in the synagogue gave a message that, you, you know, that the Messiah, the atonement of sin is only going to be through the Messiah. And right there... This afternoon, he accepted Yeshua as his personal oh, Savior. Wow. Zev, unbelievable. And, and he just called me two hours again with, with questions. He's on fire, this guy. Zev. I, I am speechless. I, I I mean, you know, symbolically speaking, of course. But uh, I I just I'm I'm overwhelmed. I'm I'm honored to be a part of this with you. I, I give all praise as you do to Yeshua the Lord. And uh, this this is this is absolutely amazing. This is end time stuff. This is biblical stuff, folks. Let me tell you who the man is that you're listening to right now. His name is Zev Parat. He is the director and founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. You can find all of his ministry material at messiahofisraelministries.org, messiahofisraelministries.org. Very soon you're going to find a, a, a hot spot to all of that at carlgallops.com uh, because I want to make it very, very easy to get to all of Zev's material. But let me just tell you who Zev is very quickly. He was born and raised in Israel, born in a rabbinical, tradu uh, traditional, orthodox Jewish family, raised in an orthodox Jewish community in Israel. Uh, his grandfather was a his dad was a rabbi, his grandparents were rabbis, his, both of his granddaddies and both of his great-grandfathers were rabbis. Uh, but, but Zev, some years back, gave his life to Jesus Christ, uh, has been rejected by some of his family and friends, but he's on fire. I call him a modern-day Apostle Paul. He won't use those words, but that's what I call him because this guy goes in and out of mosques and rabbis and the streets of Israel, down to the Wailing Wall, into the Old City, witnessing the gospel of Jesus Christ long before he met me, long before he had 
these materials in his hands, but now the Lord used me to write this book, the Messiah, uh, the Rabbi Who Found Messiah, uh, by, and WND Books published it. WND Films made a documentary movie out of it by the same title. You can buy, you can get them all, by the way, on Amazon. And in the meantime, we have shipped a big shipments of these books and movies to Zev Parat because we knew of his ministry. Zev is in my movie, as a matter of fact. He's also in my book, and I had never met the man. I just knew of his works, and so I was using his material, of course, with his permission to tell people what was happening in Israel. But now the Lord has connected Zev and I together, and uh, my goodness, uh, th these are amazing prophetic times in which we live. Correct, Zev? And by the way, if I said anything wrong about you, your family, or your ministry, please correct it. You said everything right, Carl, but you know what? I'm just a small guy with a with a big God, you know? I give all the glory to, to Yeshua. We couldn't do it without it. And I want to thank you, Carl, for your obedience to the Holy Spirit to write the book. I know God put it in your, in your heart because it's part of God's plan. And the books in Israel right now, around the world, is used as, as a wonderful evangelistic tool. I mean, it's just opening doors here. It's it, it, it's end times. That's what it is. Well, it really is, Zev, and I've got to tell you this, and I want our audience to hear this, and then I want them to hear it from your mouth as well. You're part of the story, but but hear this, Zev. Thank you for your kind words, and and you and I both. Uh, you know, we don't want to appear overly humble here. We are both genuinely humbled by this. We talk about it. We pray together. Uh, but but I am. I'm I'm blown away, and I can tell you, Zev, when I set out to write this book, it was a spiritual warfare battle for me because. Because I knew this would be a hard book to write. It's a very complex story. It, it deals with Orthodox Judaism to the max. Uh, a lot of Western Christians just do not understand that. They do not understand the role that Kabbalah plays in Orthodox Judaism. They don't understand uh, the, the, the Orthodox Jewish mindset of looking for two messiahs and, and one of them whom, whom the spirit of Messiah will inhabit and then, of course, the ultimate Messiah who is to come. Western Christians don't understand all that. So when they read this story, some people say, well, this guy, you know, God couldn't have used this rabbi because basically what they're trying to say is because he didn't sit in a church behind stained glass windows and do it like we do it. And, and I knew that people would not understand this, Zev. But, and, 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 and I've been attacked. I've been attacked by Jews who did not want this story out. Uh, that, by the way, Christians, that ought to tell you something. And, and I've been attacked by Christians who don't understand the Jewish mindset. But the bottom line, Zev, is that this man, this rabbi, this Billy Graham of Orthodox Jewish rabbis, he identified in writing and in teaching for a couple of years in his, in his uh, yeshiva privately, but he identified in writing that the name of Messiah is Jesus. And don't we have eight or ten of his students who are now on record as being born-again believers in Yeshua because of the teachings of this rabbi? And now because of the note and because of the book, Jews all over Israel are coming to the Lord. Is, is this not correct? Absolutely. It's, it's supernatural. We have ten... Orthodox Jews that were Rabbi Kaduri students in the yeshiva, yeshiva is a Bible school, that have came, came to faith. I'm sure that there's more that believe but are, you know, scared to come out. Yes. But slowly, slowly, when they're seeing that the Rabbi Kaduri students are talking and they're going to the yeshivas and they're open more, and, you know, the word the word's getting out, the books in the streets, the DVDs are everywhere, then people are going to have more courage to come out and, and, and to see that, you know, it's true and this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the revival that's happening right now. Yeah, and and, and uh, you know, and I'm I'm going to actually go into the uh, uh, yeshiva, the Rabbi Kaduri uh, yeshiva, and speak to the head rabbi over there. But you know, he's calling me over to tell me to stop using the book, to tell me tell me that it's wrong. But God's going to use it in a different way, so we're looking forward to that. Wow. Well, I, I look forward to hearing that story, and I know that you'll go under the power and protection of the Lord. Zev, I tell you what, we're going to take about a two-minute break here, but when we come back, I'm going to talk to you in, uh, uh, about the supernatural. In other words, my wife and I prayed that this book would make it to Israel. We had no idea that it would. You and your wife were praying for these kind of materials, and all of that was happening at the same time. Neither of us even knew each other, and now it has all come together. And I want people to hear that story as well as any of the other latest updates you have. Okay, Zev, can you hang on a minute? Uh, Zev Parat from Israel, he is with us. Zev, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. We Okay, good. And I, I think that I might have accidentally cut you off there at the very last. I th the last thing the people heard before we went to break was me screaming, Zev, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> but anyway, so you're back. Well, listen, Zev, tell the folks about, 
your desire, I mean, you were working on this Kaduri story long before I was, and you were using it, trying to, but you didn't have the material. So you and your wife were praying, asking God to somehow give you some kind of resourced materials. And at the same time, unbeknownst to me and my wife, we were praying as we were completing this project and, and, and the publishers were, you know, getting it all out there. We were praying that somehow these materials would make it into Israel, into the hands of somebody that could use them properly. We didn't know you then and you didn't know us. But, um, I mean, boom, within weeks, all of those prayers were answered and all of it came together. Tell, tell people about it from your perspective. Yeah, I started uh, working, God opened the door for me to start working about 212. 2012, at the end of 2011, on the Kaduri Project. And, you know, we had some Kaduri students come to faith, but we kind of hit a brick wall with it because we didn't have it documented. We didn't have enough proof to go out and, and to share. So a lot of people were just saying, yeah, it's not true. David Kaduri said it wasn't true. Right. And, you know, the media shut it down. And uh, we were just praying, me and my wife and I, Lynn and I, were praying uh, you know, God, you, you said you wanted us to, to share this message. Uh, we know that Rabbi Kaduri, uh, you know, you use Rabbi Kaduri to to come to faith in order, you know, for the for the gospel to get out. Right. So we just prayed for some kind of material, some kind of opening door, and then suddenly the the book came out in the DVD, and then we got together in a, in a supernatural way. And right now, it's been what just four months, about five months, and yeah. uh, it's just been exploding in Israel. Yeah, that's all it's been, uh, four or five months. It's it's absolutely amazing. And, and and this story is filled with those supernatural occurrences. The, the very story, and I won't go into the length of it again because I've told it here several times, but since you're with me this evening, uh, the, the very fact that it got into Israel is supernatural. I, I, I mean, it was just amazing. Uh, the, the Molers, Chuck and Tammy Moeller, M-O-H-L-E-R is their name, uh, from Indiana. They just called me out of the clear blue. They were in Key West, said, man, we picked up your book in the bookstore, and, and you don't know who we are but we've lived and worked in Israel for eight years. We have all kind of contacts, uh, religious contacts, political contacts, Christian contacts, Jewish contacts. Uh, this book is amazing. Uh, could we get with you? We want to take box loads into Israel. I mean, that, that was right after my wife and I were praying, Zev, that this would happen. And this guy calls out of the clear blue. I got to tell you something else, Zev. My wife and I have been praying that we could get this material, the 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 movie, dubbed into uh, subtitled into Hebrew and into Spanish, because I have a lot of contacts in South America. I have a lot of missions uh, uh, journeys down in there, and excursions, and a, a mission project in Peru, especially. And so that was our prayer. But but we needed, you know, I'm not going to say the amount right now because somebody gave it. We needed thousands of dollars. And again, Zev. Out of the clear blue, we got a, a, a call from somebody we did, never knew she, from up north that said, look, I, I'm, I'm gonna, God has told me to write you a check, your ministry a check for this X amount of these thousands of dollars. And, you know, and I said, oh, my gosh, that's exactly how much we need to get all this stuff, um, you know, dubbed. And so that was provided. And so now the movies are in Hebrew and Spanish, Zev. I mean, it's, I mean God is in this, my friend. Absolutely, and the fact that it, it's going to be in subtitles in Spanish is also uh, exactly the hand of God, because there's a, a certain gr a few groups here that we're ministering to in Israel that don't know Hebrew well and don't know English well. They're new immigrants from uh, from Puerto Rico and other places like that, so they're going to need, we're going to be needing that in Spanish here in Israel, too, so that, too, is a a Holy Spirit work right there. Unbelievable. Wow, wow. Well, listen, I know that you probably know this, but we have shipments coming to you now from the publishers of hundreds and hundreds of books, hundreds and hundreds of movies. They're headed to Israel between you and the Israeli Bible Society. Uh, Victor there, um, I, I mean, you guys have shipments coming. If they're not already in, they will be in soon. So, so my friend, I, I look forward to this Kaduri revival just exploding. We've got about three minutes. Uh, Zev, tell the listeners... Uh, and we have listeners all over the world. Tell them anything you want them to know. First of all, tell them again how to find all of your ministry materials and then some of the latest stuff you're doing. Uh, we can find us on messiahofisraelministries.org. Uh, you can get updates over there. Send us your email requests, prayer requests, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. And, of course, if you sign up to get our email updates, then you'll get evangelistic reports and videos live from Israel. And uh, so that's messiahofisraelministries.org. And I want to... Uh, share a little bit, uh, Carl. Yes. We talked about Shimon that got saved this morning, and yes. I mentioned that he read Psalms 22 alone. That that is something 
unusual and supernatural because for a Jew to go to Psalm 22, not through the eyes of a rabbi, not through a rabbinic book, directly just by seeing in the movie alone, to go to Psalm 22 and he says, I, I felt I didn't want to read the subtitles, I didn't want to read uh, the, the rabbinic inter- uh, interpretations, I just picked up a Tanakh, an Old Testament, and I started to read. That is something supernatural that he would read that. You know, if I go out and I witness and I show them the Bible, that's one thing, because I don't take a Bible with, uh, with rabbinic interpretations. But for him to pick up a Bible and to read Psalms 22, and we know the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, is something supernatural. A lot of people uh, need to understand Jewish people, even the ones that say they read the Bible, they don't really read the Bible. They read it through rabbinic interpretations. Right. Uh, I and, know, and, yeah. Yeah, no, go, go ahead. I, I just, I was saying, yes, I know that, and it's very frustrating. <laughs> so for him to call me and to say, I want to meet, and when I came over there and he said, look, I had to look at Psalm 22 over and over again, and God spoke to him through that, was something, it's just, I have goosebumps right now just talking to you. I know. And Zev, think about this. You know, I spend, as you know, about 10 minutes in the movie talking about Psalm 22 and how that is a direct fulfillment of Jesus on Calvary's cross, and I go into great detail, that part wasn't originally scheduled to be in the movie. But while we were shooting the movie, I was telling that story to the producer, and he said, oh my gosh, we've got to put that in the movie. So that's in the movie, and I'm very proud of that because I enjoy preaching and teaching that truth to people. But you've been using that with Jews long before you and I met up, but now it's in the movie, and now a young man is saved because of that split-second decision we made. Isn't that amazing? 